Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Terry. Welcome back to another edition of An Orchid a Day. If you are looking for a channel that's all about orchids, all about my adventures inside my greenhouse that's a jungle, then make sure you press the like button on this video and subscribe to my channel. So, I showed my kind of accidental pressings before in a video, I think, but I've never really talked about the process of how I do it. It's really simple. Um, it's really, really simple. Um, it was initially began because I would bring uh, blooming orchids that, you know, take them from the greenhouse and take bring them into the house to enjoy them, and I would take some to work. And it just got to be a habit that I started to pluck off blooms as the flower spike began to, to uh, fade and mature. I would cut, I would pluck off a flower or two and stick it in my agenda on my desk, on my calendar, sort of just to coordinate it with the date. And then that sort of evolved into uh, me using that agenda and having the same agenda at home in the greenhouse, in this, in this, in this greenhouse, I used to keep them in here, um, and I would write down um, my watering schedule, the weeks that I watered, the weekends, the days, or whatever. I'd also put in the square in the calendar. It was a uh, one of those monthly calendars. Uh, I would put in the square, the temperature uh, that was outside. I'd put and I'd list all of the plants that were blooming. That's what I would do. And to tie that in, I would also have some blossoms that were in bloom at that same time that with the hope that in the future years I could open up my book, my calendar, because I still keep all of my agendas over the years I have. Uh, so that I could coordinate what was blooming, I could see what was blooming in my greenhouse, and then over the years I could see if, you know, things were blooming on time or if things had skipped and there was a record of the blooms and the season that they bloomed in and also the temperature uh, things like that and so that kind of evolved into me wanting to preserve the flowers even better and so instead of using my agendas I began to so as I was saying before I got a phone call so rudely in the middle of this video um, which is another edition of an orchid a day but as I was saying um, what started out as me uh, saving up flowers and pressing them inside of my calendar at work, my agenda, I began to search out uh, better paper so that I could, um, you know, keep them in a more secure place and not just inside of a notebook. And the, also some of the flowers were sort of hit and miss and I tended to have more success with uh, the more moisture retentive paper so since I sort of paint as a hobby, watercolor paper was always laying around and so I was uh, first experimented with that because it was always about the moisture. And I also noticed that the flowers pressed better um, when they were freshly opened flowers, if that makes any sense, rather than a flower that was uh, going over. So in what I would do, uh, instead of uh, using scissors, I more or less just cut, clip them off by hand. Therefore, I can capture, uh, collect a few at a time without worrying about cross-contamination. So, really, this is just what I do. You know, I just sort of try to delicately pull it from the base. And then I'm gonna get one of these. I'm gonna pull this one off since this one is right here. There's that one. Hopefully this is in focus. I'm gonna grab one of these. Make sure this one is a good one. And it just clips right off. And then I'm gonna go back and get, no, actually I'm gonna get this, this, one of these up here, if I can grab it. This is one of my Sicklia Vespus. 
Perhaps I can grab one that's got some spots on it still. Okay, I got one, so we'll see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna show you how I press it, how simple that it is, and I'll be right back in a flash. All right, everyone, and I'm back. And here are the four flowers that I, you know, pinched off of the plants. I have my pencil, which I will write the flower name on the page and the date. So this is, I know this is my last book that I pressed flowers in. So I'm just going to dig in here just for the sake of the video and find a blank page. It's pretty nice. So I'll just start with this cat Leia and I really wanted to try to lay as flat as possible. And if I have to peel or clip back or pinch back some of the stem, then I do. And I might as well just go ahead and do that. Easy to do. So I just sort of position it there. And I'm gonna write the date, 1-2020. And this is uh, Kat Leia Shin Yin Raspberry something. Red apple something. I'll get the gist of it, just so that I don't forget, because a lot of times the color won't, uh, you would like the color to show through in its dried condition, but a lot of the times, especially with cat layers, it dries so dark, a lot of the times, especially with darker flowers, that it's hard to distinguish what the color was, except that it was a dark color. Um, but yeah, that's the goal, is to get some color in there, however faint it is. So. That's pretty much what I would do with that. And then I would more, more or less switch over the page, a couple pages. Then I'll take my next one, which is this dendrobium. And you know, this is fine like that. This is Den uh, Memoria uh, De Bernici. And it's 120. So I just pretty much do the same thing. Um, you're just really trying to keep it in its spot that it is until you can get it, the book completely closed and a weight on top of it. That's when it really begins to do what your intention is. And then I put this cat layer, which is Patnara, uh, Cheryl Winkleman, one, 20. Notice that it's flat so that when I turn the page, I'm holding it and then as it hits the front page, then I let go so that it's still in that position. And then, since this is such a small flower, this is my Encyclia Vespa. And I do see some spots in there, which is nice. So I zoomed in too much. All right, so that's Encyclia Vespa, and it is January 2020, 2020. So that's going to sit nice and flat there. So therefore, then I'm just going to shut the book. And with, the, with this book, unlike the other ones that are over here, this one I wrap. And where it sits, it sits on the bottom, and then the other books sit on top, and then there's more on top of it. Whereas, where over time, this bulge will be flattened. And I will do an update to this video at some point to show that. And that's pretty much all that I do. And it's, it's basically a matter of time when it is okay to look at the plants. As, at the photos, I'm sorry, the result. Not a photo, but I take photos of these. Some of them turn out better than others. And I will just show some of them to you that I've already done. Just to show you some, maybe skip past some of the others that aren't so good. Like I say, it is still relatively hit and miss. Uh, but yeah, I uh, found these notebooks work really well for me. That's a David Sander, Brasavala. Uh, let's see if I can, nice little detail. This is Vida Lee which that's probably the back of the plant. Well, I don't know what I did 
is, is the fact. But yeah, you can still see a little purple in the lip there. You know, I did mess that up, but it's okay. It was just a small piece. But the name is there, Vita Lee. This is no name, but I know by the frilly lip, I know that is my Epi Parkin, no, Ilense, which I don't have anymore. So that came out pretty nice because that detail is what is a lot of the plant right there, that frilly. Then this is my Catlea Ludiola, which was last year. This is BC Hippodama, Hippodamia. Then this is a Brassia Sunrise. Hopefully these are focused. So you can see it is well worth, and some of them are still drying. Uh, this book is only a year old, and yeah, some of them are still drying. This is a path. Lady Isabel crossed with Wilhelmina, times Philippinens. Philip, Philip you can see the petal at Sandariana. You can see that so clearly, and my camera's about to fall. But yeah, you get the drift. There's the same Stanhopia. There's another path, Pathiopedilum stonii. You can see all of the spots, the stripes, that is totally stony eye, and that was done in July of 2018. So yeah, I find great pleasure in these books, not, on, not only in uh, the fact that these are plants, and this is an example of something that did not take, but besides the fact that these plants are plants, or these blooms are blooms that came out of my greenhouse, it is a somewhat of a living record that they existed even after the blooms have perished, even after the plants are gone, have died off. So, but yeah, you can see this book was an example, which is probably why I had this here. But this is my Arangus Elysii. Arangus Elysii with that spur. And this is my Papillo. Everybody knows that. You can see all the detail in the lip that is completely papilly, papillo. This is my great gum longuscot, which is a cross between scotinum and something else, probably eburnum. Long, yeah, longolina, eburnum, that's just a variation. This is uh, my Aranthus arachnidis, which I no longer have. This is Dendrobium atrovialacium. My Forbes CI. Neat, huh? I think so. I really think so. Like I said, it is hit and miss. That has got to be uh, money or millennium magic. That's uh, Fragmopedium Cross, Bill Royale, some half Dendrobium, looks like it. So the Nicofia Robusta, you can see how this was a white flower and it's just dark and indistinguishable. Rangus Modesta. That's from a plant that bloomed for me reliably, but is now perished. That is my former plant, Rothschilianum. Manii. Sorry, this is a long video. Again, hopefully this isn't boring, but this is all about orchids. My cross. Another, that's a Scotina, a species. Cross, lower eye, crossed with Henry Anum. And then there's Dendrobium rhodostictum. So in Greekum species. And my once.
Pride, Dendrobium Medora Nishi, which is Spectabile pressed with Alexandri. I miss that plant. So yeah, you can see the glory in all of this. When they turn out, it's amazing. When it's not, when they don't, it's a disaster. I'm not sure what's in this book, but I'll just flip through a couple of the pages. Some sickly Cordigera rosea. It's my Kaisis aria. That is another Aranthus arachnides, arachnidus, sorry. That's my Path Delanatii crossed with Milipuense. That's like, there's a name for that. That is a Gongora. You can see the dragon-esque shape. That's Pawelii. That's my former plant. My, I just pitched my bicolor crossed with a Clandii that I miss. He used to bloom for me twice a year. So see, there is very much significance in this. Prince Edward of Orc crossed with Stony Eye. There's a Bulbophyllum Econolabium, one of the sepals cracked off, but that's it. Dried, pressed. It's an adorable, that is Cattleya Bogorinjana. You can see the pink lavender in the lip there. It's my Brassavala Crazy Arachnum. So yeah, you get the drift. Pathenia Majestic. So yeah, you two can do this. It's very simple. It took me five minutes. Grain Graycum species. And you two can keep your plant, your, uh, your blooms on paper so you can flip through them. I think they're still pleasing. Sustenorhynchus. But make sure you get good paper. It's a Mazdavalia imposter. And I'll just, and now I'll end it up on this one. This is the Selogeny Lawrenceana. Beautiful. All right, so if you've enjoyed my video, I hope you have. Please subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.